prowling around the competitors today is a sleekly designed Cat Challenger 35, 45, and 55 track equipped models. Don't be fooled by their brochures which tout them as being today's most efficient row crop and tillage tractor. Talk about a claim that's just dead wrong. Cat is trying to enter the agricultural market with a product that few are asking for and which they're claiming all farmers need. But what can we expect from this new entry? Although Cat has produced a track product for the agricultural market since the early 1900s, they have only slightly more than a decade of agricultural experience with the Challenger tractor. To develop an understanding of what CAT is trying to sell the farmer, let's examine the advantages and disadvantages of tracked vehicles versus wheel products. Primarily, CAT is selling traction and limited compaction with their rubber belted tractors. But what's at the heart of this issue? Caterpillar is suggesting they can achieve better crop yields using the high flotation characteristics of tracks. And they also say the Challenger can get into the field quicker in the spring when the ground is still wet. The industry has struggled with the issue of soil compaction affecting crop yields. Several controversial studies have been completed which examines the effects of track and wheel tractors. The results indicate that radial tire tractor owners who adhere to the recommended tire pressures published by the tire manufacturers have significantly less compaction than overinflated tires. So if there's no significant advantage to tracks, there must be some explanation to why tracks are so inviting to try. In fact, as you know, Case IH is continuing to develop the quad track. The engineers are researching the design concepts to improve the traction, flotation and performance of both the four-wheel drive tractors and the high horsepower row crop tractors. Let's take a closer look at the CAT 35, 45 and 55 tractors to see what they have to offer. First of all, any comparison between the CAT and the Magnum can only take place in the field. For that reason, we brought together the Challenger 45 and the Magnum 7240 and 7250. We used the Cat 45 for our comparisons. We would have liked to have included the 35 and 55, but they were not readily available in the summer of 1995. Traditionally, agricultural tractors are compared using the following criteria. One, the horsepower of the unit. Two, the standard features of the tractor. 3. The base price between the similar models. And 4. The operational characteristics of each model. Let's look at our first criteria, horsepower. The Challenger comes in at 175 PTO horsepower. That places it up against the Magnum 7230. The Challenger 45 is rated at 200 horsepower. That places itself between the 7240 at 195 and the 7250 at 215. And as we saw at the 1995 Farm Progress Show, the Challenger 55 is rated at 225 PTO horsepower. CAT's Challenger 45 is using their six-cylinder 6.6-liter .6 engine. It has an air-to-air aftercooler to maintain fuel economy. The engine is sleeveless with a 35% torque rise and an 8.5% power growth. The Magnum 7200 series uses its outstanding 8.3 liter engine. This increased cubic inch displacement offers not only better horsepower, but excellent engine life in tough day-to-day -day farming operations. The water-to-air aftercooler system used in the Magnum has proved to be an excellent performer. The air coming out of the turbocharger is cooled by the engine cooling system. Magnum uses a patented mid-mount liner engine design. It's been found that sleeved engines perform better than block engines because the cooling efficiency is better. In high horsepower engines, the combustion temperatures go dramatically up during lugging. Now, let's look at the next comparison criteria, standard features. Let's start in the cab. Hey, what's this? Have we climbed into the Ford Genesis? Yes and no. This cab is manufactured by the same company who produces the Genesis cab. It provides a roomy interior with tinted glass. The controls on the right side are well marked and easy to reach, just like the Magnum controls. 
The front display panel has several groupings of indicators. Bar graph indicators show oil temperature, engine coolant temperature, engine oil pressure, and fuel level. Also, engine RPM, ground speed, and gear selections are shown. Now, let's go back and concentrate on the right side controls. The transmission controller resembles the Ford Power Shift controller because it's the same transmission built by Funk. The transmission has 16 forward speeds and 9 reverse. By bumping the controller to the right, you increase the gear selection by 1. If you hold the controller to the right, the transmission will automatically step the gears up. The transmission controller is programmed at the factory to start out in fifth gear from neutral. If the operator wants to start out in another gear, he can pre-select any gear from first to tenth. A programmable upshift-downshift button on the console lets the operator automatically change gears for headland turns by one, two, or three gears. Remember the advantages you have with the Magnum's 18 forward, four reverse full power shift. Our power shift can easily shift one gear at a time, or unlike the cat, it can shift to any desired gear by simply positioning the lever. Magnum also offers an optional creeper transmission with six forward and two reverse speeds. Plus, Magnum has a mid-mount master clutch which protects the transmission from excessive shock loads. The reliability of the Magnum powertrain is a proven reality. Over 65 million field hours has been achieved by over 50,000 units sold. That kind of track record is something CAT can only dream about. A little further back on the CAT console is the hitch position lever. The Challenger includes a standard three-point hitch with a lifting capacity of 12,500 pounds. But what CAT does not offer as standard equipment is draft control. Magnum owners have always enjoyed the load sensing system used in their tractors at no additional cost. The Magnum philosophy is if a hitch is mounted to the rear of the tractor, it should be fully functional with full draft control, no options. The standard hitch lift capacity on the 7240 and 7250 is a remarkable 14,950 pounds. That kind of extra capacity provides maximum hitch durability and reliability when using mounted equipment. The hydraulics on the CAT uses a closed center pressure compensated load sensing system. It comes standard with three remote couplers. It delivers an externally controlled flow of 24.5 gallons per minute at 2100 RPM. The maximum pressure delivered is 2750 PSI. The pressure flow compensated system on the Magnum has proven to be the finest in the industry. Two remotes are standard on the 7240, while three are standard on the 7250. Both models can be equipped with four valves, which provides in-cab flow control of 22 gallons per minute at 2300 PSI. Now that we've had a chance to look at the engine, drive line, and hydraulics, let's look at price, the third point of our evaluation. The price information we have goes like this. A standard Challenger 45, including a 16-inch wide track set on 60-inch centers, rolls off the truck at a dealer list of $139,600. The 7240 Magnum is 26% less costly than this pricey sum. Even the 7250 MFD is 16% less. And don't forget the price of the optional draft control on the Challenger. It adds nearly another $1,000 to the bottom line. Another factor to consider is resale. Because the Challenger is a specialized piece of equipment, not many farmers see its value. So trying to resell a Challenger is yet to be seen. The Magnum has outstanding resale capabilities. It has been proven time and again. The Magnum will bring the highest resale dollar on the used equipment lot today. So, if you're over the sticker shock, let's look at the fourth criteria of comparison, the Challenger's operational characteristics. A standard steering wheel is used to control the hydraulically controlled differential steering system. The tracks are constantly under power, even during turns. One track speeds up, while the opposite track slows in order to steer the Challenger around corners. This design would seem to provide excellent power in the field, but we found out otherwise. 
In this simple demonstration, we placed a 6800 combo mulch ripper behind the 45. This gradual hill, plus a slight turn, proved to be a problem. Maximum tractive effort was lost because the uphill track was moving slower and not in line with the direction of travel. It was not difficult to repeat this effect. Simple turns under load in a wet field made the tracks slip. While flotation is great, the loss of traction will mean getting the unit stuck in the field. The same hill and turn was easy for the 7250 Magnum to conquer. With the differential lock engaged, all four wheels pulled the 6800 up the incline with no loss of traction or effort. Another characteristic of the Challenger is soil slabbing during turns. When the unit comes to the end of the field and makes a turn, the soil boils out under the tracks, leaving an uneven, erodible mess. This occurs especially in wet conditions. Plus, look at all this debris in the track system. After only a short time in this straw field, you can see how this material has jammed itself between the guards and the drive wheel. Here's yet another disconcerting fact. We found that when entering the Challenger, the operator has a tendency to grab the steering wheel. When the engine is running, this could be a safety issue. Look at that again. When the steering wheel is used as a handhold, oops, the entire tractor moves, throwing the operator off balance. CAT's mobile track is a one-piece rubber belt with flexible steel cables in the carcass. The belt is driven by the rear axle. Steel rear wheels have a rubber shell that provides a frictional drive to the belt. The tension of the track is maintained by a self-contained spring and nitrogen accumulator system. Three sets of bogey wheels are used on each side to maintain track contact with the ground. The overall wheelbase is 86 inches. With the standard 16-inch tracks, a contact area of 2,755 square inches is achieved. Mathematically, this equates to 9.2 PSI. With Magnum, you can achieve a contact pressure of approximately 1 to 2 PSI higher than the inflation pressure. So if the tires are inflated to 8 PSI, the contact pressure will be about 9.5 PSI. Why did we say mathematically when comparing the Challenger and Magnum contact pressures? Because we believe weight transfer makes all the difference. If you place a heavy load, such as a hitch-mounted ripper on the Challenger, the weight will transfer off the front of the unit to the rear. So the rear of the track will compress the soil more than the front. It's not evenly distributed as it was in the mathematical formula. Plus, this weight distribution makes the Challenger hard to steer. As the hitch-mounted implement is raised out of the ground, the front nose comes popping up, making the unit feel unstable. Front weights are available as well as mid-mount weights, all of which adds to the total gross weight of the Challenger, making the contact pressure go up. Let's compare the versatility of the Challenger to the Magnum. Typically, a farmer needs his tractor to plant, cultivate, harvest, pull wagons, and till the soil. Each are unique chores requiring the tractor to work in many field conditions. If the Challenger is used in row crop, it can be ordered for a specific row width. 60-inch rows are popular now, so it can be ordered in that configuration. But what if the farmer wants to use it in 40-inch wide rows, requiring an 80-inch setting? No problem for the Magnum. By resetting the front wheels on their hubs and moving the rear wheels on the bar axle, the farmer is ready to go. But the Challenger is on its way back to the shop. The drive system needs to be disassembled and spacers need to be installed. These spacers come in at $1,400 plus shop labor. Even if the farmer owns the spacers after the first season, he loses the capabilities of the tractor to work in narrow and wide rows. Also, consider the cost of replacing the belts. No local tire service company is going to stock these items, so back to the cat dealer for what should be a simple procedure. In our opinion, there are just not enough advantages to the Challenger to warrant the high price and inflexible operating characteristics. CAT has developed a tractor for very limited markets and specialized applications. The Magnum and Steiger lines of tractors are renowned for their durability and flexibility in all kinds of field and operating conditions. 
So remember your advantages and comparison points. The proven reliability and fuel economy of the engine and drivetrain. The full 18-speed power shift with an average of 15% speed increments between gears. The simple field-proven reliability of the controls. A hydraulic system that delivers on demand. And a hitch lift capacity which makes the cat whimper. All the standard features in the Magnum still cost less than the high sticker price of the Challenger. And operationally, the Challenger would like to think its claim on flotation would place it in the field earlier. But with changing field conditions, soil types, and field tillage practices, these advantages begin to dwindle. Compare the weight transfer characteristics, and you'll see that the soil contact area and compaction numbers don't always relate to the mathematical formulas Cat likes to illustrate in their brochures. And for flexibility, the Challenger can't compare. Conversion from narrow to wide rows to match various field conditions and crops is no problem for the Magnum. Few customers have asked for the Challenger, while over 50,000 customers have demanded the reliability of the Magnum. Take time to compare the differences between these two tractors, and you'll see that the Cat just does not compare to the world-class Magnum. <laughs>